up. No personal requests, no multi-part questions. And for every question I ask, you guys get to ask too. You know, normally on the back side of my thing, it always says, Katie, there are children here, please don't swear. <laughs> Usually it does. On this one, it just says, smile. <laughs> Katie, the first question is for you. Many fans were upset by the revelation in the series finale that Starbuck was not quite human. What did you think about your character's fate? Um, you know, I actually really liked it. I mean, I don't, I never sat down and I and talked to Ron Moore about like what my character was or wasn't. And so I really, I have no idea. I speculate a lot. And, and usually when I can, I can tell when someone really wants me to have a definitive answer. And so I like give them an answer that I heard last from a fan. <laughs> <laughs> I have absolutely no idea. Um, you know, I was really happy the way that it worked out because I think that um, I always said that, you know, please don't have Starbuck, like, skip off into the sunset with Apollo. Not because, like, she didn't love him, but because she wouldn't have been happy just being married and in that life. So I think that it made complete sense just for her own, I guess, peace. So, I don't know. Thank you. Yeah. First question on this side. <laughs> Okay, next question. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's interesting. I don't know, what do you think about that, guys? Yeah. It's deep. Yeah, this is a really awesome question. It's a question about ESP. Hold on. <laughs> no, 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 I got it. Okay, so the, if you guys didn't hear that, it was, um, did I ever receive any grief for playing a female Starbuck? You know, um, I think, were you at Comic-Con the first year when we got booed? Yeah, be honest now. Yeah, yeah. So we got booed at Comic-Con the first year, and I got death threats. <laughs> yeah. Stand up, who was it? Yeah, exactly. And they're here. You know, so I, I, it was really, it, it was, it was kind of a lot, and like, it's just like this, like, onslaught of like, you know, people being very angry, and every single time I just tried to divert attention from me and say, but Boomer used to be a man and black. <laughs> I don't understand why this everyone's attacking me. This side. Hmm. Okay, staring contest. <laughs> this is really cool. Hello, Bob. Right there. Okay. And back to you, Bob. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's his name. <laughs> Your character had a volatile relationship with his father, unlike Richard's Apollo. Describe what it was like working with Edward James Owens. Gosh. Um, well, it changed hugely. Uh, when I first met Eddie, I thought he'd taken a hit out on me. <laughs> um, the, the way he stared me down every time I walked into the room. It's like, you know, how dare you blonde-haired, blue-eyed, limey kid come in here and try and play my son when I've got three perfectly good sons who are up to the task. <laughs> Which he informed me pretty well straight away, and he said, you know, my son Paulie's coming up to visit this weekend. And I thought, well, you know, my ticket on air calendar is about to come under my door any second, because that would be it. And then Bodie showed up, and he was lovely. But, um, so at the beginning he was trying to terrify me, and it kind of worked, and it was kind of good, because, um, you know, I don't, those of you who've seen the miniseries, we're not exactly singing from the same hymn sheet. Um, <laughs> um, he would say things like, he dragged me into the makeup truck, um, sat me down, and sat himself down next to me, and we both looked into the mirror for a really long time without saying anything. <laughs> and then he said, um, you ever wear lenses? <laughs> I said, no. I'll wear the lenses. You dye your hair. <laughs> and that was kind of our relationship for the mini series. <laughs> he wouldn't even look at me in the scenes, and I've since found out that was exactly what he did on Miami Vice to um, those other, other two young little looking dudes. I can't remember. Yeah, yeah. Um, he didn't look at them once in the, in the whole series, and he was playing that game with me for a while. But then we landed in Vancouver with my family. Kerry and I were looking for a place to stay in Kitsilano, and we thought we'd stay by the beach, which would be rather nice. And um, we walked into this little house with our realtor, and who should walk out but EJO. <laughs> and I thought, oh crap. <laughs> not only are we not getting on as father and son, but now he's 
bidding for the same house that I want to live in, and I've got no chance of winning that battle. But he ran out, literally ran out, picked up Isla, gave her a huge hug, and, and did the same to me. And then the relationship completely changed. And uh, you know, Eddie's a really goofy, goofy, family-loving guy who just creates that atmosphere. And you know, I'm lucky enough to sort of, you know, he, he's kind of my dad in LA because I don't have a dad in LA. Um, I have a dad in most cities. Uh, I just pay these father-son relationships up again. And who wants to be my Atlanta daddy? Grace, you at the front, you look great. Um, so anyway, we're very close now. He's kind of godfather to all my kids, and we live near each, near each other in LA. And he's just the warmest, affable, most empowering, enabling person ever, which really puts his performance in the miniseries. Uh, it's a concept because he did play the scary arts alpha male very well, as you know. Thanks. Next question. Hey, this one was for uh, Jamie Bamber. Uh, is there any chance we'll ever get the pilot released for that uh, the show you did with Ron? Seventeenth uh, Precinct. Yeah. Um, well, I, I was sleeping in one morning, which doesn't happen to me very often, and uh, my wife Kerry was set up the computer and said, "Hey, hey, hey, your pilot's online. I'm watching it now." And I heard this. Um, sort of a Eamon Walker sort of voiceover, which was never in the script, which was kind of a fix it because there were some problems with the pilot. And I thought, well, fuck, I, I must sit down and watch this thing. But by the time I got out of bed, it had been pulled by NBC and all the legal wizards uh, that they have. You've seen it. I, I know a lot of you guys have seen it, but I haven't. So um, I, you have it. I have it on my computer. Awesome. <laughs> so actually, you're going to be Jamie's father today. <laughs> Father, 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 son. Yeah, you can do, do what Eddie used to do. He said, I'm watching you in every scene. <laughs> every daily, every take, I'm watching you. He said to all of us, I think. No, he just grabbed my ass. Yeah. <laughs> very good. Very good. No, I, uh, 17th was an amazing thing because, you know, it, it was a, a lot of the BSG crew that live in Vancouver worked on it. So it really did feel like, like a kind of swan song and uh, a new beginning. And it's just a shame that it, it didn't quite... Uh, go down well with um, you know the powers that be at NBC, but uh, we had a lot of fun making it. It was a very complicated show, and I think I understand why it didn't get picked up. If Ron had a mini series like he had with Battlestar to establish his you know quite quite complicated world, then I think we could have been telling another really powerful allegorical story as as, as he did with Battlestar. But you know it it, it wasn't to be, and it's not really um, anyone's fault. It was one of those things that that was just maybe too sophisticated for a one-hour network pilot. Um, you know, and the audience, apparently, at the screenings just wasn't able to quite get it. But um, uh, you guys are brighter than the average audience, so uh, <laughs> if you speak to row three over there, you can all be watching it, but you the screen. Next question. Show, and I'm rushing to the airport and I'm trying to get 
through the, uh, you know, the security and all that stuff. And I swear to God, I'm looking, I'm going, my God, this line goes on forever. I'm never going to make the plane. And I'm looking, and I had not met you. And all of a sudden, this beautiful girl looks at me and says, come on in. <laughs> Step in the line. He thought I was hitting on him. I was just being nice. I was like, I actually know you. You should, you should come with me because you're going to miss your plane. Right. Well, I had no clue, you know, who, who Katie was at that time. And she lets me in. I thought, Jesus Christ, that never happened. And, I didn't just... <laughs> and, I, and, and then when we get to the airport and finally, you know, it turns out to be you, you know. And, uh, and then, of course, it was kind of nice because uh, getting, building a relationship with you helped me when I came on that set and didn't know anybody. And you introduced me to everybody, so... It, it was a little strange walking on there because, you know, I had written a bunch of articles, never actually putting down the new show, but I was really presenting an argument about why networks never seem to listen to the fans. And so it got a little scathing. People were a little pissed, a little upset. And, uh, you know, so there was a lot of kind of underwash going on. So I didn't quite know how everybody would take me coming on the set. So I was more than happy that you guys were very forgiving and very supportive and welcomed me on the show. So, by the way, if I never said it, thank you very much. Thank you. By the way, I, I, was I supposed to answer a question? <laughs> movie. When are you going to be in a movie? Uh, what do I think of the new movie? Universal has discussed developing a Battlestar movie unrelated to the series. Well, that, you know, that, that movie has kind of been in development, falling in and out of development for probably the past two years. And uh, I know that Brian Singer is the director of it, and they've had numerous writers coming in and out. Glenn Larson was supposed to be involved in that. I, I think they have not, just like so many big projects, they have not found a script that everybody is happy with. And by the way, it's not going to have any of the originals in it. It's going to be another reimagined version of the original. So again, I have no idea what direction he's going. It seems strange to me when you had the original, right? You come back, you do this amazing new reimagined version, and then you're gonna go back to the original. What new ground are you gonna cover? You know, where are you gonna go with the well, story? Well, they're gonna give Starbuck his penis back. <laughs> exactly. So that's new ground. So Richard, you said you didn't know how people were gonna take you while well, your first episode was in a prison ship. <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually love that. I mean, that was, I thought that was just a great way, seriously, to come on the show, to be able to have scenes with, with you, yeah, with well, a new Apollo. Yeah. It was, it was meta television, you know, there was that element, that extra layer, which I know fans of shows love, to, to imagine, you know, this is the old and you coming together, and they're in a sort of, a relationship that uh, doesn't get off to the right start, and, um, you know, and there's, a, there's another father-son sort of possibility down that, that road as well, which was being explored. It was, because you and Eddie were in antagonism as well, and I thought you were a different avenue. It was clever, it was very clever, it was fun to do, and it yeah. kept, kept growing and growing and growing, and there was always a, a crackle of something every time we had a scene to play. Yeah, yeah, I know, it was, it was great. Fun. And it, I just loved hearing the old stories about um, Richard in the 70s hanging out at the Universal lot, basically living in your trailer, right? That's right. Which, uh, you know, blew my mind, because I was a fan. Like uh, Katie's mom, um, <laughs> and uh, yeah. So for me, it was, it was a huge thrill. I mean, it, I was nervous for sure, but uh, well, I, I have to say that my my biggest disappointment with the new show was, you know, at the end before I get flushed very politely out the airlock, uh, <laughs> I wanted to have one last scene. I thought that would have been great to have one last scene. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're like Gata had with James Callis. Yeah. You know, just to have a moment to kind of get an insight into, you know... The Maybe we could do it this weekend. <laughs> Why not? We can start now. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, how did you find out you 